So that was the connection that I made to Discovery uh, with that, with with her seeing her life without her parents when she said, I feel like we're all alone and that, you know, something's going to destroy us. And then knowing that Michael's parents were killed, you know, that sort of, that struck me the second go around. I didn't catch it the well, first time. See, I could see where you're making the connection, but it's kind of like deciphering Nostradamus. No one can do it before the events happen, but after the events, you can point to something they said that proves what's yeah. going to happen later. That's not really a prophecy. You know what I mean? Like, so, yeah. Um, I don't know. I didn't catch that. What I did like about it in the beginning was when the father says to her, are you really afraid or are you more afraid of being afraid? Because the truth is more people are afraid of being afraid than whatever they're afraid of. And her answer is great. She's like, I don't even know what that means. Like, I'm like five, dude. Yeah. You know, like, yes. <laughs> she says that a couple of times. <laughs> Illuminate. <laughs> right. Aluminum. Lum, lum. She said like Illuminati that's I, or that's something. That's what I mean. I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah. No, and that I thought was a very Star Trekky message. Like, there were so many Star Trek messages. I guess morals that I got from this, and that was one of them. Like, the idea of fear versus fear itself. And I wanted to ask you, like, are there things that you are seriously fearful of, or is it just the idea of being, of having that fear? I can give you fear? a perfect example, and it makes no sense okay. in life, but I'll, I'll give it anyway. I do not do roller coasters. I don't do them. I don't do thrill rides. Do you know why I don't do thrill rides? Because I'm afraid they're going to break. There's almost oh. no chance of it happening. But right. the idea of being stuck on something and being afraid of it breaking is enough that I'm scared to even get on it in the first place. I'd rather just keep myself out of the situation. So that's the idea right. of fear. Because, look, yes. here's the bottom line. If it did break, by the time I realized it, it'd be too late to worry about. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and... I guess that's sort of the crux of what fear is. It's the idea. It's the unknown. It's this what you fabricate in your head, right? I would assume so, yeah. I would also assume that, I would also say that, um, and these kind of stories always kind of try and alleviate fear. However, that's not good either. That's true. It, it's good to have a healthy sense of fear. In fact, I would argue you cannot be brave unless you're scared. Exactly. Anyone can walk across a room. And if you walking across a room, if I fear something on the other side of that room, it's brave to go there. However, if you see the same thing and don't fear it, well, there's nothing brave about what you're doing because you're not thinking it through yep. to its next step. Like, if there's a lion on the other side of the room, I would be afraid the lion would eat me. If you're not, then you're not really brave going after the lion. You're just not afraid right. of it in the first place. Yeah. Well, and that's, yeah, the same with brave or courage. Like, and that's been used in Star Trek before. I think Picard even said it. Like, if you're not afraid, then that's not courage. Correct. It's yeah. Correct. And the bravest it's just people you doing something. The bravest people. I don't yeah. think this is from Star Trek, but the bravest people. It's not an absence of fear. It's an ability to conquer the fear and still yeah, do things while time. afraid. Yeah. Yes. I don't want to be brave. I'll stay off the roller coasters. <laughs> Come on, be brave. Okay. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> Next time I come to visit, let's go on a roller no. coaster ride. <laughs> I'll join you at Disneyland or Disney World and we'll go. Okay, sure. I'll watch. I'll wave. I'll hold your back. No, wait. Didn't you do the... I did do um, one roller coaster. Well, you did one roller coaster? I did coaster? one roller coaster. It's a pretty easy roller coaster to do, but I did uh, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. It's a runaway train roller coaster. The rail. Okay. Well, it's a roller coaster. All it's right. not. It's not the railroad that goes around the park. It goes thirty <laughs> miles an hour. It banks okay. and it dips okay. and it goes up and down. I know. I saw the pictures. That it's was not, really uh, good. Come You're on. Like I've never done this. I've, I don't do this. No, I, I haven't but here done I it am. since I'm. I did that roller coaster last when I was seven years old. So I was thirty years ago. Wow. Yeah, and I did it again this time. So the Troy in me is really wanting to delve into this. <laughs> That's a whole other episode. <laughs> <laughs> that is. <laughs> a lot more than one hour, too. 
Okay. Well, another interesting point that I wanted to bring out that I saw in this episode was that we have the wisdom of the elders versus the wisdom of the youth. And the elders are afraid to go beyond the darkness. And she rate and you know, there's a famine. There's they're not getting what they need from the earth or wherever they are. No, it's earth. And they so say they're Africa. Like, what? They're in Africa. Oh, yes, that's right. Yes. And so they're like, what are we going to do? And then we have this cute little young girl who says, We should do this. And the elders, no, 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 we shouldn't do this. And I thought that was very interesting to recognize because there's a lot of fairy tales, if you will, of where the youth is portrayed as being silly and wasteful and not having the wisdom, but yet this story flip-flops it, you know? Yes, but I think a lot of stories do that. I, Moana does that very well. In fact, because Moana wants to venture out into the ocean and... The, which right. is exactly the same story here. Not the ocean, but venturing outside of your borders to find what yep. you need. And what's happening in Moana? There's a famine. There's no food. They, because the darkness is coming to destroy the world. It's getting yes. rid of all the plants, plant life. And she ventures out into the ocean when she's told not to by the elders. But yeah. so, And this is just a retelling of that story. And that t- t- was a retelling of some other story. It's not like Moana was the first story that thought of this. But mm-hmm. a lot of times, and we see this in society... Social change doesn't happen without the youth. The old want to stay the way it is. They want to continue mm-hmm. to do things for the most part. I understand there are people who buck that system. But for the most part, the older generation doesn't like the younger generation. says, in my day, we did this. And that's great and fine and wonderful. And that might have been perfect for your day. However, technology and everything else has changed. So now we do it this way. So you need that youth. I mean, a child's a little young to be making huge changes like this, but for the purposes of these kind of stories, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. It, And when you say Moana, I'm like, what? Why didn't I think of that? For some reason, I was thinking Pocahontas. Yeah, that could be too. I have a love-hate relationship with that movie. Mm -hmm. I really like the movie itself, but it's so inaccurate to the real events that it's almost disturbing. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess I got the Pocahontas vibe with the leaves and the... Yeah, colors of the wind. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's exactly I was like, oh, Pocahontas. Yeah, and that story is good too. And that does bring about change in the Disney universe. However, the real Pocahontas was brought back to England and paraded around and showed off. But Yeah. Well, we won't get to reality because <laughs> so, we're in fairy tale. Okay, perfect. Right but, so, <laughs> but if you look at... As you're saying, if you look at a lot of things, um, you can point to in um, uh, Little Mermaid. She's supposed to be a 16-year-old girl who goes and lives on land. Uh, Moana, uh, Pocahontas. You have Jasmine, who doesn't want to marry just to marry, who bucks the system in the movie Aladdin. You have There's a lot of places where the youth changes the way things happen. And Mulan. M- Mulan's another one where, you know, um, yeah. she has to pretend to be a man to live in that society so that her father mm-hmm. doesn't have to do it. But right. on top of all that, then you do see places like in Aladdin where at the end the sultan goes, oh, if, the, if it wasn't for that rule, well, I can change the rule. So he learned from the youth. Maybe that rule was good 50 years ago, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, but it sure is heck not good now. And yeah. I, I, my belief is, and they don't go that deep in morale in the Disney movie, but he didn't think the rule was ever good. And he realized now that it was never a good rule and it should have always been changed. Uh, you also have Brave where she doesn't want to get married. So she joins the competition so that when she wins, she can decide not to marry anybody. Mm-hmm. So this is, I mean, it's, it's a classic tale and it's a great tale and it's done, it's portrayed really well. It's just not Star Trek. Okay. To you. Or most people I've spoken to. Well, you're speaking to me, and I think it is a very good message. Great message. It's just not a Star Trek way of telling this message. The episode is not As not Star Trek. of now. I mean, up till now. Yeah, okay. Okay. So I, I liked seeing this, the, the, that the youth had the wisdom that this little, and she, yes, a little young, but... We get the idea that it's youth versus the elders, right? 
And, you know, with me working in education, I love seeing how the younger generation are going to change the world. And I still have hope that they will. I see so much good in my students and what they become. And like, I've been teaching for 20 years now and I'm seeing my kids, those who have kept up with me on Facebook and what they're doing now and, and working for green companies and that they're changing this and they go like, there are some serious movers and shakers and it just, it gives me hope. And I, that's what I, when I watched this, that's what I felt like. I was like, man, the youth, they are going to change the world as we did for our elders. Right. Yes. So, okay. So what's, what's funny about this is uh, I'm, so I'm 37. So I'm kind of in a mid range right now. Right. I'm not really young, Mm -hmm. but I'm not really old. So I'm young enough to identify with people who are in their 18, 19, 20-year-old range. But I, I, I really don't see old people's view on much of anything. But I, I'm old enough that many of my peers do side with them. And I make the comparison to all these people all the time that every single generation has done the same thing. They've changed the world. Right. Every one of them. Yep. Every one of them has been called lazy by the generation before them and told they will never amount to anything. And yet, each and every time, they've done something massive to change the world for good or for bad. Some of those generations weren't so great. They created large amounts of debt and using credit cards like they were Monopoly money. Other generations have fought World War II. Other generations created the tech bubble. There's a lot of things that have happened, all of which that generation was told it was never going to do. And we're in the same place now, which is what this story is telling. It's an older generation telling her she can't do anything about it. They, right. they don't say it outright, right. but that's this story. Yeah, it is. It is. So another interesting point that I wanted to ask you. Um, so the crux of this fairy tale is an alien. I did not see that coming one little bit. And I watched it again, and then she's, you know, the the dark and the snake is going to come and get her. And then she's like, she saw a light. And I was like, go towards the light. And it's an alien. I didn't even see that coming. But I liked that she didn't fear the alien. And that I think, in my mind... That the alien, because didn't sense her fear, was a good alien. Now, is that the message that we want to send? No. However, I will say this. It's ironic. I was talking to somebody. uh, I don't want to give any names because I don't know if they can get in trouble for having this conversation. Uh, People who work with them listen to my other podcast. So, however, I was talking to somebody and they spend their entire time because of their job trying to get children to open up to them, play around with them and okay. have a good time with them or whatever, right? Now, one of the things we as parents, because we're so fearful, do is we convince our children to be deathly afraid of strangers. Yeah. Yeah. So cautiously fearful is one thing. However, we have convinced, we've. there's been massive campaigns on stranger danger and all these other things. And this is going to get a little heavy for a podcast about Star Trek, but... The average child that's hurt, harmed, or killed is done so by a family member. It's just not done by strangers. That's just not the statistical facts. Now, I'm not saying strangers don't do bad things. But what I'm saying is we've disproportionately feared strangers to what their actual impact on children have been. And because of that, when we put them in situations, they would never act as she did. Because she'd be so afraid that she wouldn't go anywhere near that light. Um... So, should you be cautious? Yes. Children should always be cautious because you could be grabbed in a heartbeat. However, the likelihood is better that someone you know is going to be do danger to you. So, outright fear is not a good thing. So, I don't really know where to take it from there. You know, I, I hesitate following that because your example is more poignant. But when I was down in uh, Santiago, Chile over Thanksgiving, there are thousands of 
stray dogs. 